Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Sertori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Sertori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com. Today, we have a special guest with us. So this is actually going to be a special episode. I'm calling it Two Shamans and a Muggle edition of the podcast. So and if this becomes a popular, I guess you could say, series within this podcast, maybe it'll be a spinoff. So just let us know in the comments if you like that idea. But we do have uh, the lead accelerator with us today. Her name is Sarah Ellingworth, and she is the lead accelerator on Bonnie Saratori's team of amazing, amazing accelerators and healers. And so Sarah's with us today to talk about on curses and we're going to be getting deep into the topic of curses this is technically like a part two episode part one happened about a year ago so this is that was actually bonnie our first episode ever for consciousness unleashed and that was back when we didn't even have the title consciousness unleashed for this podcast so it's a, i consider this like our anniversary oh, cool. so yeah, it's, it's great. And we invited a, a third person, Sarah. Do you want to um, just introduce yourself briefly? Hi, so I'm Sarah Allingworth and I'm the lead um, accelerator for Spiritual Acceleration. And um, I'm Australian, based in Australia, um, teaching Intuitive View and Foundations in 2024, which I'm super looking forward to. Yeah, and just here to contribute and chip in however I can. And I'm really looking forward to today's conversation. Thank you, Sarah, for mentioning foundations, too, because that is coming up. And the topic we're talking about today is something that if you want to learn more about it in a very in-depth way and actually know how to lift curses and other types of castings like spells, hexes, charms and other types of, you know, you will learn so much. But if you want to go deep into that, you definitely want to go into her newsletter and uh, find out about more about foundations and and hopefully Sarah will be your instructor in that you'll be teaching the Australian time zone though right? yes Sarah. we're offering it in the Australian time zone this year which is super exciting when I did it I I was fortunate enough to do it throughout the COVID lockdown so I didn't have to get up and go to work but it was like two o'clock in the morning for me getting up and starting class <laughs> so I was like mm, not everyone's as crazy as I am but yeah I just it's an amazing course and I wanted to be able to open it up to other people who wouldn't normally have access to it um, just because it's not really conducive to our time zone. So hopefully it allows a lot more people to reap the benefits of the teachings from foundations because it really is amazing. And yeah, the depth that you can get out of it, particularly with dark forces and curses, dark magic, clearing and releasing and the liberation from those types of frequencies is amazing. So yeah, I'm excited to be offering that. All right. Thank you. Bonnie, do you want to say anything a little bit about that before we move into the curses uh, topic? Yeah, I mean, you, people can take foundations just for their own healing. You know, not everybody wants to be a healer, but it's just going to give you information you won't get anywhere else. And it goes really deep. So you learn how to, how to heal, how to unravel, work with your friends, family, with yourself. So it isn't just for people who want to become professional healers. Thank you for that. And there will be links in the description if you want to find out more about all of the uh, trainings that we have uh, with Spiritual Acceleration. Okay, so let's get into curses. So I do want to remind people there was a part one. We did talk a lot about that. We talked about signs. How do you know that you're cursed? Um, Bonnie also gave an exercise for people to uh, remove their own minor curses. And so those are ones that are, um, they're not cast by, I guess, a, a, someone who actually really knows what they're doing. So people could actually watch that episode and use that exercise. And I did it myself where I knew there were some people from my past who had bad intentions. And that was somewhat of a curse. As And when I did that exercise, I felt a difference. But I will be talking a little bit more about some more powerful curses that I had on me later in today's episode. So I do want people to know you should check out part one, and that will deepen your understanding of what we're going to talk about today. But one of the things that came up, Bonnie and Sarah, from after doing that first part, and uh, people were asking questions, and one thing I noticed is people were still kind of confused about what curses really are, even though we weren't really in depth. And I think one way to kind of understand it a little deeper is to maybe give um, a clearer definition of what 
maybe a curse is energetically rather than how it shows up in one's life. Like, because you did talk about that a lot, Bonnie, in part one. Like, how do you know in your life um, if you have a curse? But maybe you could talk about how it looks like energetically. Like, what is, what, how does a curse actually work? Okay, so think about an emotional um, feeling. Like, let's just say we're interacting and I get really angry with you. Maybe you do something and I feel like I hate you, I want to kill you, that kind of thing. Okay. So the emotion behind it also is impactful in the actual curse. Not everybody understands that they're actually cursing when they are, okay? And we have other people that intentionally do curses. So people that don't understand their cursing, there's a desire to cause harm, to cause ill will, to undermine you, to punish you, to hurt you, to, you know, to do damage to you, okay? So what's so that could be very simple. Someone can just <clears throat> label it in a way that just says, you know, I really want, I wish for you ill will, or I wish for you that for your entire life you'll be barren, or you know, or you won't, you'll be, you know, you'll be starving, or you'll, you know, whatever, never have love. Okay, that's a desire that's coming from a novice, so to speak, and in that they can actually create an energy field. And there can be a blanketing of energy that goes over your over you, and it will literally, like almost like a cloaking, it'll encase your entire energy, and then it'll start blocking you from the very things that you want that are now in that cursing, that are inhibiting blocking you from the things that you you know love, relationship, connection, money, wealth, good health, all of that. Okay, so that's a common one. Also, I think people can relate to this. You whack people as well. You know, for example, someone cut you, you're driving, someone cut you off. Most people have a reaction to that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you, you know, you bad, you know, swear at them or whatever, and you flip them off or whatever. That's a whacking of energy that people can feel. Like I, <laughs> I have felt that a few times in my life, you know, driving and, and in, not intentionally, but I have done things where I pulled off in front of somebody and it's like, they honk the horn, they flip me off, whatever. You can feel that whacking of that energy, okay? You can feel it. And, and so that's a very, very common one that people do all the time. And when we get into intentional curses, like <clears throat> let's just say that I just want to do, I just want to mess up, you know, Cynthia's life. So whatever, it doesn't matter what my reason is, but being someone who knows how to work with energy, then I can intentionally create this frequency that will be sent right into your whole energy field, right into your body <clears throat> that you may or may not feel. And I can set it up in a way that says, okay, like I'm cursing you so that for, for you and, the, and your family, you know, your, your brother, your family, your mothers, your fathers, you know, there anybody else in your family, you know, I'm gonna send this through for eternity, you know? So I set that up. <clears throat> with intention and it becomes an energetic frequency that literally enters into your subconscious that goes into your belief systems deserving levels things of that nature and then you know it just kind of it gets anchored in and then it also gets put into your family you know like your mom dad whoever i'm labeling i can include you know include massive amounts of people and and then have that energy get activated so that it's running your, in your energy. So even when you pat, leave the body in this lifetime and then you're reincarnating, you're still going to have that cursed energy. It's still going to be there. It doesn't just go away because, you know, this is a curse that I'm intending for you as a soul for forever, so to speak. Or I can just label it for this lifetime. So in this lifetime, maybe I have a belief that it's only in this lifetime or that we only have this lifetime. I can curse you and <clears throat> it's possible that it will fall away, but not necessarily because it's still a cursing. It's a casting of energy that gets in infiltrated and implanted in your subconscious on an energy level. And that energy is affecting you on different levels, depending on what that curse is. Okay. But the more intent, the more emotional that you are, the more of an energy that you have behind it, meaning, you know, like 
we get jealous or envious or we feel a sense of hatred or re wanting revenge, then it has that a bigger emotional impact, which is going to actually affect you more severely. You know, it'll be a more intense experience. And that's the kind of thing that will just keep staying with you until either you lift it or somebody else lifts it. We don't always know that we're cursed, okay? But oftentimes just by looking at what's happening in our world, there might be a suspicion of a curse, you know? So again, you, you're not necessarily gonna feel it. Some people do. It can have a physical sensation to it. It can have a shrouded energy to it. meaning you can, you, sometimes you might even feel like your lens or you're looking through your eyes and it just doesn't seem crystal clear. Those can be those shrouds of curses. So again, it's just an, it's an energy thing. And, you know, like anything, we can open up energy vortexes, we can seal vortexes, you know, everything's energy. So it's just a matter of what do I want to do with it? You know, like, for example, I can, you know, I've done open, clear, sealed off vortexes that were sending out lots of dark negative energy and a lot of dark things were coming through, seal that off and they're not coming through. It's just working with energy. So the same thing with curses, there's an intention behind it. I wanna cause harm, I want power over, or, you know, I want you to suffer, I wanna punish you. There's something going on on an emotional level. So again, you know, anybody can do it. You don't have to be like a, a witch or a sorcerer or a wizard. People do it all the time and don't even know that they're doing it. You know, that's why for me, it's kind of like, you know, be aware, you know, it's like, be aware of yourself, be aware of your intentions, be aware of what you're speaking, because your, your, your words, what you say echoes for eternity. Those, those energies that we speak go on and on and on and definitely. So, you know, have that in your awareness so that, you know, do you really want to echo that out into the world? Do you really want that to be echoing for eternity? Is that what you want? So have that kind of an awareness and then what it does is it makes us more accountable and responsible and maybe looking more deeply at, oh, I'm, I'm having, I wanna hurt her, but wait, do I really wanna do this for eternity? Do I wanna cast this forever? You know, some people do, cause you know, some people are pretty mentally messed up and the, that victim energy and that unconscious energy and then we do wanna cause harm. So, you know, the, that's pretty much what's happening. It's pretty simple. So. Thanks for mentioning all that, Bonnie. You did talk about this a little bit in part one, and there was a lot of comments about if people actually accidentally did this to others, let's say they were mad and they want, they just out of the, you know, because they were just so angry at that moment, they might have said, oh, go to hell or I, I hate you or whatever. I hope all these bad things happen to you, but they don't really mean it. You know, they just in that moment, they might have did this kind of casting and maybe it was actually very powerful. And so some people in the comments asked, well, what if they didn't really intend to do that? And could they take it back now? So maybe, Sarah, could you answer this one? If you have that level of awareness in the moment, like it, it just comes out of you and then instantly you're like, why did I do that? You can actually say cancel, clear, delete and with genuine intention and it will just evaporate the frequency. And also, too, like it, it has to have a genuine level of forgiveness and apology in it, I guess. And it sounds like for those people who are asking about that, there was a genuine, like, oh, I didn't mean that. That instantly takes away some of the power and the intensity of whatever that's been projected. But I know for myself and when I've done things, literally, I've just gone, oh, cancer, clear, delete. I didn't mean that. And the energy, I've just seen the energy sort of evaporate that Bonnie would you say there's anything more when if it's that simple like if it's that immediate as well if it's yeah. bigger than you go through the forgiveness process yeah so some, like and... for you Sarah you can say cancel clear delete all right you've got the power to do that other people mm -hmm. do not so I think mm -hmm. now this used to crack me up when I used to go to the Ganesha Center do classes whatever I did there and you know <laughs> people would start saying and something would happen and they would say something and go well, cancel clear delete and it's like it didn't really work okay because remember for you this is what's really important remember this from emotion when we speak that energy is already out into the atmosphere it's echoing through eternity and i'm not joking okay so if we literally aren't skilled at cancel clear delete which not everybody is then you're gonna to have to do a little bit more than speak those words. You're gonna to have to pull that energy back. 
Okay, seriously, you're gonna have to pull it back with intention. Like pretend like I did this to Cynthia and then I go, oh, I didn't really mean it, but pretend like I'm, you know, I don't know any of these things. I'm just a normal person, an average person that doesn't have any kind of skills of energy healing. And so I get mad at her and I, and I say something and then I feel bad and I go, oh no, I don't really mean that. I didn't really mean that. It's still, even those words, it's not gonna change. Think about this. The energy came out of my boy, my mouth. Okay. <laughs> that energy went right onto you. Okay. It's already absorbing being, you know, connect, it's like coming right into everything of you. Because you also would have a reaction at me saying something like that to you. Okay. So your energy goes, <gasps> and then that energy comes in and it sinks right in. Okay. Then you're already, you're already anchored into your subconscious. So I can pull it out with intention, okay? It's like that whole thing, like I said that, now I'm really aware. I didn't really mean that. I really didn't mean that, okay? So then I can feel that desire to pull that out. I didn't really mean that. So now I have to intentionally give the energy like, okay, I am pulling it back. I am taking it back. And literally feel that happening, sense that happen and see it happening, know it's happening hear it happen and smell it happening, taste it happening on all levels. So I'm literally pulling it right back out of you. Otherwise, it's still lodged in your subconscious, okay? Just so you know. <laughs> all right, I think this muggle will take that lesson and <laughs> apply well, I it. Think it's, it's also trust anybody, girlfriend. <laughs> it's a good, but it's a good um, opportunity to understand the power of our words. Like literally, everything we say has energy behind it, and everything, like what you're saying, everything that comes out of our mouth is a projection. It's energy, and so the yeah. more we think of something, the more energy that gets invested into that, and that's the emotion that you were talking about before. So, the level of awareness that we have will help filter what comes out of our mouth <laughs> mm -hmm. that's yeah, right. you'd rather do that than yeah. have to constantly clean up your mess because <laughs> as you were talking I was just like gosh that's a lot of energy <laughs> I'd rather just go okay, so clear to lead I'd rather learn that <laughs> yeah well you can do that because you because you already have you're at a skill level but not everybody is oh yeah that's true and that's really yeah. the truth not everybody is i watch people throwing yeah. energy all the time it's like whoa they don't realize they're doing it yeah and, like, and the other thing that thing? exactly and the other thing that i was thinking when you were talking about that too is that not everybody has so for those people who really need to pull it back in really intentionally generally they also don't have the level of awareness to understand what they've done. So mm -hmm. that piece right. doesn't really happen. It just gets yeah. projected and then yeah. it gets left. Even yeah. if there is a level of, you know, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. nothing yeah. else gets yeah. done because they don't right. have that awareness or their consciousness can't expand that far. So, mm -hmm. and again, that just makes me go learn, <laughs> learn more, yeah. learn about, yeah. learn about energy and the power that it holds. And again, mm -hmm. this comes back to under people understanding how much power is within them, <laughs> even in the spoken mm -hmm. word. And, mm -hmm. you know, you will literally change the way you operate and function as a human being on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I find that fascinating and amazing, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of human, most, of, most of the people in the world, don't really understand energy, the sensing of energy, the frequency and what it does, the power of it. And the, you know, it's like, it's really the people that are on a conscious path or have an awareness or you know, have been seeking on some level or people mm -hmm. doing healers, all of that. Even it does you know, even healers don't have these understandings. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. a trick sometimes how people mm -hmm. can be a healer and there's no accountability for their actions or their words or their deeds. Or, <laughs> Yeah, they're the you know, ones that believing. crack me up the most. So yeah, so it doesn't, you know, you can. It, here's the thing. Here's here's my barometer. Okay, this is why I didn't study with anybody ever because my barometer could feel and sense the distortion. If I felt distortion, I wasn't going to go study with that person. Unfortunately, everybody's got distortion, including me. So that wasn't really the best way, except that that was how I was meant to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring forth what I brought forth. Okay. I'd have been learning from other people, applying what they what they were teaching. But I went by going direct, 
you know, then they bypassed all the, you know, the, all the other stuff. But basically, you know, I woke up to the frequency of, of giving voice to things. I woke up to the energy frequency as well <clears throat> that we are all a part of the whole, so to speak. I w- I'll share you the story really quickly. So I'm in, I'm in Yosemite, okay, hiking. We went hiking. And my friend and my I, we, we were hiking way up into the mountains and major waterfalls and major water coming down and we were hanging out. And I was looking on over to Horsetail Falls and I'm sitting there kind of like, <clears throat> like a, in a meditate, going into like a meditation kind of thing, just opening to the universe, opening to receive and guide and all that kind of stuff. And I'm watching the, the, the falls at Horsetail Falls and I can see, and all of a sudden I had the knowing even if one iota of mist decided to not be there, plucked out, it would echo through the entire frequency of that entire waterfall. And then I got the knowing that, whoa, it isn't just that, it's on all levels. Like, you know, like if I checked out, boom, that energy, it would echo through eternity, that whole energy. And then I saw too, that what we speak, what comes out of our, our mouths, the, what we, the words we speak, it's like that too, I could see it literally. And I, it's like, it's like this energy frequency coming out and you can see the echo of it, the vibrational frequency of it. And it just keeps on echoing, 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 echoing. Okay. So, <laughs> so that was where I learned about, whoa, okay. What we say. And then, and then also we, who we are as a whole, we're all part of the whole. And even like if I decided to check out and never come back, that whole energy would be affected. But that is true for everyone, not, you know, Cynthia and Sarah mm-hmm. and everybody. So this, those are my teachings. Those are my trainings by being in nature and, and seeing things and being, and, and being downloaded with knowledge and wisdom and truth. And, and then to, to see that and then watch it and observe and witness it in my life. So that was, that was my training on what we're talking about as far as you know the power of the word which is amazing amazing mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you for sharing that bonnie i think that really illustrates how every single thing that we do just is really important that we're mindful of it mm-hmm. and so i do want to shift back to sarah for a bit and I would like for you to talk about your, you told me before about the story of how you were cursed before, and it was specifically a witch's type of curse. So maybe can you talk a little bit about the, there's different modalities of like magical arts, I guess you could call it. And many of these have like good and bad, like good witchcraft, bad witchcraft, or maybe call it white or dark, even sorcery, there's like white and dark. Right. So maybe you could talk about the different modalities that could cast these different types of curses or spells and whatnot, and then share your story about how you um, got cursed by witch. <laughs> well, it's a, a little bit of child's play. It was back in school and I didn't even know at the time, as Bonnie said before, I actually wasn't aware that there was a spell that had been placed. And there was a boy that I went to school with and we weren't really friends. Like we were, but we weren't. And I had two other girlfriends and we were talking about witchcraft and spells in class just one afternoon. And then for the next, with this boy in particular, and then for the next three days, my two girlfriends and I, we just became obsessed, like literally obsessed with this boy. (laughs) And we just, (laughs) we hung out every spare minute of the day had to be with this kid and then and then boom it just went just like we didn't want to know him just didn't like didn't want a bar of him for like and then I just thought what had just what has happened we couldn't get enough of this kid for three days and now I couldn't even tell you what his name was it was so weird and I was like it was a spell because of what we'd been talking about on that first day he had placed some type of spell <laughs> on the three of us towards him but then it almost reversed like it bounced back and whatever he placed actually had the reverse effect after that and yeah we just didn't want to know him and I was and because everything's in equal balance it's like everything's what goes up must come down so 
that was that and I didn't realize at the time when if during that period I had no idea that there was we were just totally in that frequency like totally receptive to whatever he'd done and yeah it wasn't until we'd come out of it that I realized and we were I don't know we were maybe 13 14 <laughs> quite young so I mean and that's a bit of child's play like um, it's nothing too serious but I get it's intention I think even when you're talking about you know dark magic and light magic and it's really to me witchcraft and magic is learning to work with the elements you're just working with the laws of nature but you're manipulating it to create an outcome or to influence energy to generate a a specific frequency so learning or understanding and this is I think where um, Awaken the Shaman is awesome at tapping into those natural frequencies understanding the laws of nature and how to work with the elements it's nothing new it's it's a resource that's available to us but it's our intention behind what we want to do that will determine whether it's light or dark and the other thing I think to note is or again, like everything in equal measure, like it's just a natural cause and effect. Whatever you put out comes back. And the more of, uh, the more level of awareness and consciousness you do that with, the more intense that return will be. So if you're sending out, you know, a negative thought, that will come back to you. <laughs> That's just the natural laws of karma. So if you put out blessings of love and abundance and whatever you bless everybody and just let it go with you know no desire to receive it's just you give with good intention the natural laws of karma will give that back to you and the more intently you do that the more you'll receive it's the same with the negative aspect the more you project out the more that that comes back which also or fascinates me with people who are very like you know when you talk about sorcerers and you know really dark magic (laughs) <laughs> what they must be receiving back it just blows my mind like I don't, I don't yeah anyway it's I don't really it's heavy it's very very heavy I don't know if Bonnie has anything she wants to share on that one but yeah so so also the, what what also happens is whatever we're really holding in our subconscious you know here's the deal it's like the subconscious is going to win no matter what mm-hmm. so even people that are doing negative things see here's the thing like people calling upon the powers of darkness to be able to do castings, to be able to do curses, to be able to have power like black magic, voodoo, you know, sorcery, things of that nature that are using the, the powers of darkness. So remember too, that when you have agreed, you make made packs with the powers of darkness, they're going to be supporting you as well. Meaning they're going to give you what you want on some level. Okay. But again, it's the subconscious. So let's just say, let's just say I'm, the, I'm, you know, a really negative being, and I just want to, I just hate everybody, and I just want to curse everybody that even looks at me weird. I would probably also be in a constant state of suffering, okay? Because that kind of negativity is also stemming from belief systems in the subconscious, and and let's just say that I'm not like a really dark being, but I have a belief system that way to work energies i have to use the powers of dark so there was a time when we've actually believed that that we believe that how how we create things like curses or hexes or charms or even things that we think is positive so you know we're still calling we're using the powers of darkness for good even though we're using dark powers okay so even with that we're still we still open that door for that that oath promises, allegiances, agreements, and contracts, the powers of darkness. Once that door is open, it doesn't just close. That's important to know. And the depth of our own unconscious, you know, how do we, what are we living? You know, maybe, you know, maybe I'm a conjurer and I'm thinking I'm doing good things. Like for example, someone wants to get pregnant or something, you know, maybe I'm going to conjure that that can all happen. But again, I'm probably, if I'm using the powers of darkness, I'm still, there's still that negative energy that's involved that wants will want something back from me at some point in time you know it's not if you don't just take from the powers of darkness and think we're scot-free and there won't be any retribution or there won't be any time to pay your pay your dues you know for what you've gained from that and that's where the suffering really comes in and you know for truthfully we can 
if we want to do things like help someone get pregnant, we don't, we never have to use the powers of darkness. We really don't, you know, everything is available in, in the light. So, you know, if you want to be, if you want to do hexes and charms and help people in a good way, go, go direct, you know, and the light isn't going to be sending curses to people. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to use the light to cast a curse on somebody to, you know, to cause them harm. It isn't going to work. But, you, you know, again, you open that door and again, it's still what's in your subconscious, how damaged is a person, you know, usually people are pretty severely damaged when they've got these feelings of, you know, everything negative, like you're hurting me, you're doing this to me, why are, you know, that, that whole thing of that victim consciousness, when they curse somebody, it's going to be really intense and ugly, guaranteed. <laughs> so, you know, again, it's like, where does a person live that's doing it? everyone's different and again those really dark ones are you know those really negative ones are going to be dealing with people that are pretty damaged severely damaged um, i want to go to the next question but is there anything else that you wanted to add sarah or is that good i think just the victim consciousness because that's what i see the most when i'm looking at like when i am seeing a curse in someone and even just recently it presented like a really heavy heavy netting that had just been dropped over the entire being and any time I've seen anything like that, the perpetrator or the person who's created it, it's always been uh, in retribution, like they're wanting retribution. So you've got this person in this incarnation who thinks they're a victim of this curse, whereas they're, they're receiving the backlash of whatever they've done in a previous lifetime. Like these, both these parties are sitting in victim consciousness wanting to attack the other person for where they feel the wrong do doing has been done. So I find that really interesting. The victim consciousness is behind all of it. So when even as a recipient, let's say you're the one who's got the curse, when you go into taking responsibility for however you have shown up that has contributed to this situation or learning or experience or lesson, you immediately start to give yourself power in taking back, you know, even clawing back your freedom and, rem and not allowing that energy to access you or penetrate you as deeply it still requires the clearing and the undoing and the unraveling and the releasing the forgiveness and the, all the rest of it within both parties but yeah I just I find that piece really interesting the victim consciousness and it is a difficult one it's one that a, a lot of people can be very embedded in but yeah that's the only thing I sort of wanted to mention that was a great segue Sarah to one of the questions I had I'll just get to that question then which is about uh, some people, they, they watched part one of the curses episode and they did some of the curses clearings that Bonnie has in, in their group clearing. And I know a lot about curses in, as a recipient of them because <laughs> I've had plenty <laughs> of curses. And one thing that it seemed like people weren't really understanding is that when you have an issue, let's say you, you have, let's just use one example, let's say, maybe 10 lifetimes ago, I got cursed in relationships or something like that, right? And let's just say I never had relationship issues prior to that. And so I got cursed by someone, let's just say 10 lifetimes ago. And I experienced from there, I had all these different experiences of not being able to attract, you know, love. And, and I would have these heartbreaking experiences from those I would end up concluding all sorts of things. I would have a lot of trauma, a lot of emotional issues. And all of that lifetime after lifetime could build up. And so it's not just the curse that holds that particular pattern in place. It's all the things that came from that those experiences. So all the different beliefs I might have concluded, all the you know, the closed heart, all the uh, trauma, maybe soul fragmentation, all these different things that could be contributing to it. So let's just say it did start out as a curse, maybe. But now it's so much more than just the curse that's keeping that pattern in place. And so this is something that I felt like your audience, Bonnie, your community needs maybe a deeper understanding of all the different components that could come into it. So even if they do lift the curse itself, if they haven't done all the other clearing parts, that aspect may not change so do you want to do you both want to talk about that too because uh, I felt people weren't really clear on that mm -hmm. yes it's true it's like like here's another thing too that will anchor things in deeper 
if I'm afraid of being cursed, meaning if I have a fear that people have these abilities or that they, these things can happen to me, I am going to take it deeper. For example, let's just say in my world right here, right now, let's just say someone, you know, does a curse on me and I hear about it or whatever, I'm going to, you know, be done. I won't allow it. But if I'm not aware, then, you know, they could sleep in. But again, you know, it's our beliefs, it's our deserving levels, it's our, you know, how worthy are we? And if I've already got these beliefs anchored in my subconscious that there's something wrong with me, I don't matter, I'm not enough, I'm not wanted, I don't belong, any of these, any of them whatsoever, I'm not loved, then the curse has, a, has a, it's almost like a soil to anchor into, you know what I mean? Like if you're going to go plant something, you want good soil, make things grow. So cursing somebody who's got unconscious, undeserving, unconscious, you know, belief systems that are indicating that they're not worth anything or they're no good or not loved, whatever, there's going it, to, it's, it's a better soil for that curse to just anchor in. And then it just keeps growing, it gets bigger and bigger and more powerful over the person, you know, it, it gets hold, it anchors in and takes hold and keeps growing as opposed to like someone like myself or Sarah or, you know, other people, you know, someone tries to curse me, I'd probably laugh it off. I, mean, I wouldn't even let it, I don't care how powerful they are. You know what I'm saying? It's like that whole energy is because it's an energy frequency that's coming mostly from an emotional energy. And, you know, it's like, we don't, we don't really have to allow it or buy into it or, or take it in. You know, it's like, there's nothing for it to anchor into. That's another thing too. There's the clearer we are in our subconscious, the, you know, the more we have self-love and, and belonging and a sense of, you know, being anchored in the world and wanting to be here those kinds of things don't have the same effect or the same power over us because we're, it's, a, it's that emotional impact. You know, like for example, someone curses you, somehow you're believing I deserve it or I, got, I, did, I did something to cause them harm or whatever, you know? So there's still that belief systems that are still in the subconscious that are also affecting the ability, the strength, the power of the curse. So if you want to add anything, Sarah? Yeah, no, I sort of, mirror all of that and it's you know those experiences <clears throat> where we then accept that as a level of truth and it just keeps embedding deeper and deeper into the subconsciousness and that's what gives the subconsciousness power so and I think I sort of harp on a lot about that <laughs> in my clearings because the subconsciousness it has to be up leveled that is you know, 50% of the equation to me, it's the clearing, but it's also the up-leveling of, of the subconsciousness to complete the whole healing and in, in raise your vibration so that, yeah, that, that projection, you recognize that it's a projection of the other person. It actually has nothing to do with you. And so when that wounding is no longer within your being, it has nothing to hook into and it just bounces right off. So that, and that, that's empowerment. That's not victim consciousness victim consciousness is totally accepting it and then going oh wow how dare you do that to me you hurt me <laughs> and you just stay connected and and stuck like a gridlock in that mm -hmm. level of existence and there's you know there's no joy there's no freedom there's no that's not fun <laughs> so coming out of that is the hard part and that's where I say to people you've got to fight for yourself that's you fighting for yourself is you going, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Taking responsibility for your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors, what you've contributed. Um, it's hard. It actually is hard when you're really coming out of though, that initial, you know, the mud, the heaviness of everything you've been addicted to or sucked into believing everything that you've, you know, and that can be through ancestral lines. It can be through our past lives, all of our experiences. It just keeps getting embedded and embedded into our being. So yeah, what, yeah, the more you can take responsibility for yourself, it's almost like giving yourself a leg up to get out of that mess and disconnect from whatever is being projected at you. It's a big part of the healing process. So one of the intentions why I wanted to ask that question was because I felt like there were some people who find that curses episode and all they do is they listen to maybe the curses ones and let, let's just say as a relationship, they felt they're cursed. And uh, one thing I want to make sure the audience knows is 
definitely want to listen to the cursed ones, but also listen to like the loved ones too. If that's the area where you feel you're cursed, then maybe you actually do have curses in around love. I would recommend doing also the loved ones too and self-love and just, you want to really hit it in all components that could be really causing that. And it may not be just the curse component, the energy of the curse itself, but all the different things that we talked about today as well. So I, I just want to make sure people kind of really have that understanding of how to really tackle the, these things. And also, um, if you can, definitely you want to do private sessions because when the curses are really that powerful, if they're done by people who they really know what they're doing, you may need to have a private session for those. And I had a session with Rosario, who is on the team, and she uh, lifted a curse from me and Tina, who's also on the team, and she lifted a family curse. And I do want to share a little bit about that, um, specifically what Tina did for me and my family, because I knew, I, I always knew I had a, a curse. I was cursed. I, I just knew it. I felt it. And after the session with Tina, I just felt this, like maybe like an hour after the session, I felt this opening in my heart that I never felt before. And it felt like freedom was actually possible. And, you know, this was like one 20 minute session I had with Tina. So I didn't expect her to make me completely free in that session, but at least the feeling that it was possible because I never felt that way before. I never actually felt free, let alone actually believing that I could be free. And something that she did touch upon in that session was she she read my energy and she noticed that every time I would do my inner work and I would felt like I went above like that that threshold that there was this it felt like there was something that always had I had a lid on me if that makes sense in all areas of my life so no matter what I did if I did all these different energy healing I did some conscious work, but whatever, I felt like I would reach that threshold, but then boom, immediately, maybe the next day, I would just be brought right back down below that line. And she pinpointed that, like she actually described that. I was like, wow, she's good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when she did what she did to lift the family curse, I felt like I could actually stay above that that threshold, if that makes sense, and and actually progress even further beyond where where I was after that session, and that's how things have progressed for me since then. It was such a liberating session for me, but I wasn't able to get that just from the group clearings. That was something I, I needed that private session with somebody who actually knew how to do this, and it was a very powerful curse that was passed down from my family for generations, and so I just wanted to let people know that if like I know how it feels like I've I've had so many curses and it's been so hard for me but I just never gave up you know I, I eventually found Bonnie's work and that's what really opened everything for me and then that session with Tina was really a pivotal one for me and now it's just things are opening up so much more as I keep doing this work too and I'm just so grateful for all the work that you do Bonnie and that's it. So I'm doing private sessions now with Sarah. I have bought a package and every time I, I do a session with her, it's just incredible. So mm -hmm. I just really I encourage, think. there's many, many services and products that Bonnie has mm -hmm. on spiritualacceleration.com. And one of those is of course the trainings and Sarah, we, I guess we should just end it off here um, because it's getting kind of late uh, where we've been recording for maybe 50 minutes now. So do you want to talk about a little bit more about foundations and uh, your role in foundations and what people could get, uh, not just the curses stuff, but, you know, just generally, mm -hmm. can you tell us about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think Bonnie made a really good point that I've been talking about with some of the team in regards to foundations that it is literally for anyone like, yeah, if you're a healer, great. It will definitely expand your skill set. And, uh, you know, the dark forces piece, there's so many elements to that that will expand you as a being. But I think I really want to highlight the fact that foundations can offer anybody such deep clearing and healing, like everything that we've talked about today, even the victim consciousness and suffering trauma, it the healing that you can get personally out of foundations is huge. And I meet a lot of clients who 
the, oh, the, you know, that, and, you know, people who keep signing up for clearings and the healing clinic. And I'm like, there's a part of me that just goes, do one of the courses, even if it's know thyself or foundations or even awaken the shaman, you get tools, uh, intuitive, you get tools and things to learn that empowers you to help heal yourself on a daily basis. But for foundations in particular, yeah, the healing that you can get out of that is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. So don't think that it's just for people who want to be a healer. It is literally for anyone who wants to learn how to empower themselves. If you know that you're in victim consciousness, but you want to start working towards getting out of it, foundations can offer you that. And it gives you tools that you can use on a daily basis to support yourself, to empower yourself. Um, to keep chipping away. And that, and that is, I think, that I, I also meet a lot of people who are desperate for the change and who just want to get this shift happening. And sometimes it's like, well, it, it can take time. It can take time to really pierce through the consciousness, the ego, the resistances, the fear. And as long as you just keep showing up for yourself every day in whatever small capacity that is, and you keep chipping away at it, but you you learn the resources, you get the support, the teachings, the tools, foundation can just offer so much. So yeah, I really wanted to get it out there that it's not just for people who want to know how to heal others or expand their, their skill set because it will 100% offer that for, for you. But if you're thinking, how can I help myself? What's, you know, if you really want a deep dive, (laughs) do foundations. It is a deep dive. So buckle up (laughs) because it brings a ton of stuff up. But that's amazing. That Like to me, that's just nothing but reward. Uh, I know. And that's not for everybody as well. But I think if you are here and you are watching this, then there is a part of you that is um, curious and, you know, follow that curiosity and see see where it takes you because to me it just offers liberation and you know who doesn't want that isn't that why we're all here (laughs) Sarah so could any muggle take foundations and then become a shaman afterwards (laughs) yes I find that yes is the short answer. A lot of people get blocked because they feel like they're not, they don't have the intuitive skills straight off the bat to go straight into foundations. So that's where you can do things like intuitive you or awaken the shaman just to make sure that you've got a really solid foundation or the the openness, the skill sets, whatever you need to go into foundations. Anyone can do it. There is no prerequisite for it. If you are lacking the confidence, then you can always book a session, do a 15-minute free consultation. There's quite a few of us that offer that now. So you can have a chat with any of us and we can give you some feedback, intuitively looking at you and give some advice on maybe is there something else you can do to set you up to be in a stronger position to go into foundations or are you just good to go? I think um, a lot of people are like they just, they doubt, they, they lack the confidence, but they've got the capacity they just need to do it. So there's lots of ways you can sort of check, check yourself, check in with others. And um, is this the right option for me or is there something else? But yeah, I would I strongly recommend foundations for everybody. <laughs> I think mean, everybody, either that or know yourself, know thyself, awaken the shaman or intuitive you. They'll all set you up um, very nicely to go into foundations. But I, I'd say just jump in, just jump in and do it. You're going to learn, you'll grow you'll find your feet. It'll happen. I'm just excited about everything that spiritual acceleration does and everything that Bonnie does and, and your contribution right now, Sarah, um, cause you're, you're pretty new still with uh, the team, yeah. and you, but you've contributed so much already and uh, it's just really awesome. Thank you everybody for listening. Um, this is consciousness on podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like this video, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what you think. If you're watching this or listening to this on Apple, leave us a review. And thank you once again. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Sarah. Bye. Bye. Bye.